I'm in my library right now and I've got a ton of language learning resources. I'm gonna teach you how to pick one up and diagnose it as a good or a bad language learning resource. Let's go. I'm gonna start by saying this. People have been learning languages for thousands of years without fancy language learning resources and tools. They help, but they're not necessary. There are people in developing countries learning your language right now because pencil and paper. So don't go overboard and think that these are gonna give you the language. They're not. You have to be the one to do it yourself. Let's take a look. There's a handful of red flags that I look for, and if I see any of them, I immediately toss the book aside. Number one is if it's a classroom textbook, I don't really want it. Classroom textbooks, although they can be great, are not very useful for independent language learners like you or I. They require something called scaffolding, which is an educational aid given by another person, your teacher in the classroom. So if you don't have the teacher in the classroom, you're missing some stuff. Also, they tend to waste a lot of their time doing activities and things that just aren't very effective. They're not generous of your time. So anything with a classroom label is clearly obviously a classroom textbook. I'm just gonna set it aside. Conversely, if something is marketed as a self-study resource, then I'm all over it. A good one will do its best to cram in a lot of information. Or at the very least, you're gonna have very short, easy to understand explanations. I love it when language learners and not textbook writers write textbooks because then they become awesome and easy to understand. Tai Kim, Korean man who learned Japanese, he tells all in his little book. Well, Katuda means that you are already in a state of understanding. In other words, you already get it. If you misuse this, you may sound pompous. Yeah, yeah, I got it already. On the other hand, shiteru simply means that you know something. That is such an easy explanation to a question I hear so many days from Japanese learners. I see this book on the shelf. Simple dialogues. I open it up, I see In La Fiesta, a really interesting picture of a guy walking a turtle through the party. I got a dialogue. It ends over here, it's very short, very simple. And then I have these do-it-yourself prompts. I love do-it-yourself prompts because they give you actionable activities. Akeor terminan tus fiestas. I don't study Spanish, guys, sorry. You can take that and you can practice for hours on it. I could grab a stuffed animal over here and I could practice speaking to the stuffed animal and have him ask me this and then I can respond. I can have a self-started study session based on that one question alone. This book is small and seemingly unimportant, but it says down here, complete course for beginners. Hmm. I'm gonna open it up. I see words. A whole lot of words. Scary. But the tougher something is, the stronger I'll get by using it. If you actually go through this entire book, do all the activities like they say, by the end, you are at a very solid understanding of the Portuguese language. Brazilian, that is. All the resources like this are always fantastic, because back then they didn't really care about pillowing or cushioning anything. They just wanted you to get the facts. In this tiny little book, you can get so far because there's just so much information. There's menus and stuff. The pictures are minimal. Look, there's an advertisement right here for you to study. There's so much in this book. It might not be easy for us, especially if this is gonna be our L2, to just walk in here and just start doing the activities and get everything the first time. But you do it a few times, you're gonna get it. And this thing has everything you need in the cart. Japanese in 10 minutes a day. This sounds amazing. Just 10 minutes a day? What the? I, I literally don't know what it's asking you to do on this page. I have no idea. It has big spaces here for you to write this sentence, but nowhere in here does it contain any kana or kanji or anything. Even the vocabulary words are all romanized. Also, this book insults your knowledge. They use code switching in this book, and code switching is where you take parts, words, and phrases of another language and put them into your L1. Basically accelerate the language learning process, but you don't do it like this. When saying goodbye, anata wa yimasu, sayonara. Or, dewa mata, your turn. Don't forget that anata wa can always ask, that is gross, no. So here I found one that's not necessarily just a book. It's actually got a book and then some CDs inside. Because this has CDs for you to listen to, you cannot necessarily choose what you're going to learn. You are on the rails, as they say. You are following what Berlitz has designed in its course. I will say that Berlitz does a very good job in this course, but it is 
kind of restricting on your freedom. So if you're completely new to limited learning and need somebody else to completely take control of your learning and just drag you over the coals, things like this will get it done for you. Alternatively, this CD has expressions, nouns, verbs, adverbs and adjectives. It's almost like an audio dictionary. Back in the day before apps and the internet and all that crap, these things were rampant. God, I love this one. You can actually learn Korean and English with this set. It's a bilingual ESL friendly resource. Let's go. This would really only function as an auditory dictionary, which you can better get online now. So maybe I would hold off on this as exciting as it might be. Speak Japanese in 90 days. Hmm, seems like a far-fetched promise. They give good explanations. They give good example sentences. They do romanize some things, and for me, that's making things too easy. If I'm reading a language that has a different script, I should be reading that script from basically week one. We're losing a lot of space over here. We're getting a little too verbose with our explanations. Basically, it's too good to be true. Even though it says it's a self-study guide, I'm not picking this one up. Phrasebooks are fun, but they're really for tourists traveling to that place, and they just need to know the phrases, they need to know the words. They're not deep diving into the language, however, Everything in here is incredibly 110% guaranteed to be actionable. You could use this in a conversation. You might see this when you're out on the street. If you take some time to go through this, you might learn some very interesting things. Same with a visual dictionary. All right, visual dictionaries are nice because they have pictures. So you could cover up the words and just go from the target language right to the object, which is building that direct connection from the object and the word you need to know, which is amazing. They got a lot of verbs in here. Basically, if you see this DK bilingual visual dictionary, I would pick it up. Basically, here's how it works. I see this book, right? The book is Libro in Spanish, I think. If I see a book, in my head, I want to be able to go Libro. I don't want to see the book, then go book, and then say, oh yeah, book means Libro in Spanish. So building that direct object to target language word connection is what we want in this book does that. Now let's say you're lucky enough to find a book written in your target language. I I would pick it up, but you might not be able to use it right away. Don't stress yourself too much about being able to go after these things if you're just a beginner or intermediate. But if you feel like you're plateauing, this might be exactly what you need to pick yourself back up and get on the study train. I feel like I've got a lot learned, but I'm just not, I'm not advancing my studies anymore. Here you go. Dictionaries, maybe. As language evolves, some words fall out of use and some become accepted into popular vernacular. These older dictionaries might have some outdated information and you don't want to lock in a word incorrectly into your brain. I would suggest using a online dictionary. They're going to be updated, they're going to have more phrases, and they usually have a lot of slang. This is all about language learning resources. If you want to learn about language learning tools, like apps, study strategies, those we'll talk about another time. But hey, when it's in a book, take a look. We're learning here.